we'll be discussing what exactly we mean by perception and uh, what is the relevance of perception in organizational behavior and, uh, and how it is important for managers and what are the issues and challenges and problems that uh, come with this concept of perception and what we need to do as managers. So this is what I have planned to do today. Uh, I hope my voice is clear enough, right? Yes, it is. Ma'am. Okay. Now, uh, to begin with uh, the concept, uh, we need to know what exactly we mean by perception. Now, perception is a general concept, a general term to understand. I, I'm sure all of you know what we mean when we say perception. So perception is how you look at something. It's your way of looking at something. It's your uh, understanding of reality. So reality is something that exists, that, that is there. And how you understand reality and how you uh, interpret reality is your perception. So perception may be different from reality. Uh, so perception is my way of looking at something, my understanding of something. So that is my perception, right? So how, how you look at something, how you understand that thing is your perception of the reality. So it's a process by which individuals select, organize and interpret. So select means maybe you look at something, you observe something. So you are selecting some input. Then somewhere your brain organizes that input. You know, it, it tries to make some meaning out of that input. So we organize and then we interpret. Interpret means we understand that, okay, this is what the situation is. So this is what the uh, reality is. So we uh, select organize and interpret the the inputs that we have in our environment, the sensory impressions. And as a result of this selecting and organizing and interpreting, uh, we give meaning to things around us. Sensory impressions are all those things which, are, which exist around you, you know, which you can perceive with the help of your sense organs. So your sense organs are your eyes or your ears. Which on. So when you look at something, when you hear something, so all these are inputs. These are all sensory impressions. And when you look at something, you understand and then you make some meaning out of it. You interpret that. That is your perception. So you read a book and then you understand that book and you interpret. That is your perception of the book. You watch a movie. You, you look at what, what is happening and then your brain interprets something and then you understand, okay, this movie is about this. You like the movie, you don't like the movie. That is your perception of the movie. So it's how you select, how you organize and how you interpret the sensory impressions which are there, the input which is there. And then we give meaning to those inputs. Uh, people's behavior is based on their perception of things. So how I behave would depend on how I perceive things. So for example, my uh, behavior with you may depend on how I perceive you, what I understand about you. So I may become friends with you. I may become, I, I may not become friends with you. I may like you. I may not like you. All that will be my understanding of you. You may be a good person. I may think you are bad and so on. So basically it's my interpretation of you as a as a, as an individual as a person so it's basically how i behave towards you would be based on my perception about things my perception about you or my perception of things so it's it's my uh, behavior which gets affected by my perception so perception is one's interpretation of reality it's our way of looking at things and it is important for organizational behavior why because whatever managers do it is all based on their perception Managers make decisions, managers analyze, managers uh, lead, managers motivate, managers do a lot of things. And how they do all these things depends on their perception of the reality. It depends on their perception of their uh, subordinates, for example. It depends on their perception of employees. It depends on their perception of competitors. It depends on their perception of the market, the environment, the company, and so on. So it's, it's, you know, everything that you do as a manager, all the decisions that you make as a manager, they're all based on your perceptions. And so, therefore, 
perception is a very important skill that you need to develop you know the right perceptual skills so understanding how to perceive things in the right way is an important skill that all managers have to develop because everything that you do as a manager is based on your perception and this discussion of today will hover around this aspect of what are the perceptual skills that managers need what are the problems that managers encounter as far as uh, perception is concerned and how can we develop better perceptual skills so i'll be focusing on all of these issues today now before i actually start with uh, perception for managers i will first discuss the basic perception model what is perception what is the model how it takes place so i'll look at the model first the process first and then i will come on to uh, you know perception for managers and what they need to do and how they need to hone their perceptual skills all those things i will discuss later now so first we'll discuss the perception model now to understand the perception model though it may appear slightly intricate right now so let's simplify the understanding of the model so concentrate only on the blue light blue boxes which are there okay these light blue boxes are the perception process it's the perception process the model it shows how perception takes place now perception is how you look at something and how you understand that thing so so the first thing that happens in perception is we look at something or we read something or we observe something so there is something this is called as your stimuli what you are looking at for example if you are listening to me so my words may be the the input right now or if you are looking at the slide whatever is written on the slide could be the input right now you are reading it so these words become the input so whatever your sensory organs are taking in whatever they are observing that is the input that is the stimuli it could be an object it could be a person it could be a written text it could be a slide uh anything so something that you are looking at something that you are listening all that is your input for the time being so if we take this example of this class going on right now then for you the slide could be the input or what i'm saying could be the input if you're listening so the the sound becomes the input if you are observing then whatever is written is is the input so this is the stimuli all these are stimuli that you are receiving right now now what happens to this stimuli once you observe something or you look at something or you read something now your brain starts working and all of these things are already happening it's not a very mathematical process of one two three you know steps taking place like that it is subconsciously taking place inside you inside all of us it is happening and what is happening the brain is doing three things it is selecting it is organizing it is interpreting so selecting means it is trying to identify certain things so maybe whatever whatever i am saying uh, you are trying to pick up certain words because see when we are listening to somebody we don't listen to all the words you agree we don't listen to all the words we listen to certain words why is it so can somebody answer this we select we don't listen to everything if you are reading a book you are not reading every word with the equal you know Uh, attention what is happening or if you're listening to me maybe you're listening to me but you're not listening to every word what is happening we are selective we notice certain words because of the fact that our brains will not pay equal attention to every word and everything that is there in the sensory environment so maybe you know you are observing something else maybe right now you are talking to somebody or you are reading something else also or you are thinking about something else or you are distracted so you may be listening to me but maybe not every word with equal or you know attention so that is why we select certain things something that could be interesting you might notice that something that you know suddenly you realize and then you notice okay this is what this person is saying so we select certain things and one person may select something else and the other person may select something else so one person may notice one sentence that i am saying the other person may notice some other sentence that i am speaking out so we select and then we organize organize means your brain subconsciously organizes the thoughts you know okay this is what ma'am is saying so you try to you know subconsciously organize those thoughts it is just taking place inside your brain so you organize organize means 
you're trying to make some sense out of what i'm saying you're trying to make some meaning out of what i'm saying so we organize based on what you already know based on what i'm telling you more you try to organize and you try to understand and then based on what you have selected and what you have organized based on that you interpret which means that now you try to actually understand whatever i am saying so select organize interpret this is the perception process this is what is happening inside us and it's, it's as i said it's not a very mathematical process it is just going on so subconsciously based on this your output you know your attitude gets affected so for example you may like what i am saying you may not like what i am saying you may think i'm ma- making some sense you may think i'm just wasting your time and so on so you form a certain opinion or you form a certain attitude based on how you have understood what i'm saying so for example as i said you go and watch a movie you don't like the movie maybe your friend likes the movie because your ways of understanding the movie are different you like a book your friend doesn't like it so again because we interpret you know differently so our attitude attitude is your predisposition towards something you know what you think about something so your attitude gets formed based on your perception and then based on your attitude you will behave accordingly so you may continue to sit in the class you may not continue to sit in the class you may start reading something else you may start listening to music or whatever uh, so basically the the behavior gets affected by this attitude that gets formed based on the perception process so this is the perception process and it is going on constantly you know so long as we are awake and we are listening and we are looking at things it's going on constantly all day so we observe something then we select organize interpret then we form an opinion and then we behave accordingly so this is the perception process now the perception process differs from person to person so not everybody as i said would understand the same thing in the same perspective so we understand things differently you know we understand a particular event differently we understand a particular person differently because our perceptions are different now what are those factors what are those variables because of which perception may differ so there are three we can say extraneous variables three influencing variables or moderators which are going to impact our perception process these are the characteristics of the stimuli the characteristics of the situation and then the characteristics of the perceiver so the the stimuli the characteristics of the stimuli will affect your perception then the characteristics of uh, the the perceiver affects the perce- uh, perception process and the situation affects the perception process so so the what so starting with the characteristics of the stimuli so stimuli is what you are observing right now what is that stimuli the characteristics of the stimuli are going to impact how much attention you pay to that stimuli and how you observe that stimuli so all of these characteristics will impact how you observe that stimuli size for example or appearance for example you know if something is uh, different in size from the rest we notice that if something is different in appearance from the rest we notice that if something is different you know in terms of color from the rest we notice that so contrast intensity all these things we notice repetition so novelty if something is unique we notice that so if if a stimuli is different in terms of or intensity or brightness all of these things then we may notice a particular stimuli so the characteristics of the stimuli are important they affect how we notice that stimuli and they affect how we uh what what meanings we attach to that stimuli oh i missed this one slide before i discuss this characteristics of stimuli when i'm discussing the perception process i discussed so we have input then we select organize and interpret the input and then the output i've discussed this i just missed discussing this how do you organize you organize based on things that you already know these are things that help us in organizing figure and ground figure and ground means whether you look at something which is uh, at the at the forefront or you look at something which is at the background so we notice the figure or somebody may notice the ground so we notice something which is you know uh, in, in the front 
and sometimes you notice something which is at the back in the background based on that you interpret things similarly grouping you make certain groups in your mind about information subconsciously you club you know stimuli into patterns that is what helps you in organizing then you naturally simplify thoughts whatever i'm saying your brain is sim- trying to simplify those thoughts and then closure closure means filling in the misses pe- missing pieces you may already be knowing these things so you are filling in some missing information yourself and based on all these things you are organizing whatever i am saying so this is how the perception process takes place uh yeah this is you know these are uh, these are simple uh, uh, graphics that may really explain how perception takes place now what what do you see over here when you look at this particular figure what do you see so you probably see a triangle or somebody may see three white pacmen what happens so you are either looking at the the figure or the ground so if somebody is looking at the four you know front that person is probably looking at the triangle but if somebody is observing the background then maybe that person is looking at the pacmen whatever so your you know then we have different brains the left brain in some people is more active the right brain in some people is more active so we notice different things and based on that our perceptions differ so somebody notices the triangle somebody notices that white uh, object circle and then based on that you say that okay this is what is there in the figure so when these kinds of you know figures are given to you uh, your interpretation would be different from somebody else based on what you are noticing i think happens in reality also in life when you look at something you may notice something which is at the background somebody may notice something which is at the foreground somebody may notice my words somebody may go deeper and try to get some more meaning out of it so based on that your interpretation may differ so we differ in terms of what we perceive and how we perceive a stimuli Look at this. What is it? What do you see? Zebra. Zebra. But when you look at the zebra, you see that the image is not a complete image. There is no outline. It's just a collection of some lines, a collection of some black shapes which have been brought together. But your mind knows that a zebra looks like this. So you interpret that it's a zebra. so you have filled in the missing pieces because you already know what a zebra is like so you fill in the missing pieces and you think it's a zebra whereas this is not a zebra it's just some white lines on a i'm sorry black lines on a white background but those lines have been created in such a manner that they appear to be like a zebra so we are filling in you know missing information and we close the information based on what we already know and then we interpret that it's a zebra or it's a lion or a tiger or whatever so the, again this happens in our uh, you know daily lives when we look at something when we listen to something we may already be knowing certain things and then we fill in those pieces and we conclude that okay this is the problem this is the situation or this is what the person is saying now you may fill in some other pieces of information i may fill in some other pieces of information and based on that your perception may be different from my perception so principle of closure all these things they affect how we interpret how we understand such certain things can you spot the hidden object in this figure yeah i have tablet okay again you know not everybody may be that quick in in spotting so again that depends on whether you observe the foreground or the background so depending on where the object is placed somebody may be quick to point out somebody may not for me it took a lot of time to really understand where is the hidden object and what is it so because maybe i'm looking at the background so our perceptions are different how we observe something is different and that is why our understanding of reality is also different and that is why perception is important for managers now coming to that the factors you know the the three uh, i have a question sorry am i have a question oh, i'll take up i'll take up the question let me first complete this puzzle then i'll take up your question okay, okay. The characteristics of stimuli perceiver and situation they affect how we perceive now i just now discuss the characteristics of the stimuli for example you may notice a very big letter on the slide or a very small letter did you so we notice something which is different in size from the rest 
similarly appearance so you know somebody is different or something is different we may notice that or we may notice bright colors or we may notice something which is different in terms of the way it is presented contrast and so on repetition that also we may notice something written repeatedly you may notice is something written repeatedly written is written two times all right then motion you know we 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 try to observe you know especially when it is said that when you're speaking for example before an audience your body language is important your gestures are important uh, the movement of your eyes and your uh, facial gestures and you know, your your hand movement for example is important people pay attention to that and if you are having too many movements that is also distracting if you're not having any movements and just sitting like this and addressing an audience that is also disturbing so basically you know motion that that impacts so how the body language and is and gestures all these things are important so what i'm trying to say is a novelty so uh, what i'm trying to say is that these are certain characteristics of the stimuli that may impact how we notice that stimuli so the size the color the brightness the appearance the, the novelty the uniqueness all these things they make an impact on how we notice the stimuli then the characteristic of the situation where you are that also impacts uh, how you observe something so this is an online class uh, you may be not listening to me had it been a real class in the department i would have noticed that you are not paying attention so the the, the location the, the the physical atmosphere the situation that is all important you know we behave differently in different situations i you may when you may be with your friends in the canteen so there happens the situation the location the physical place where you are that will impact how you notice something how you look at something and how you understand something and how you behave similarly organizational setup which organization you belong to the features of your organization the characteristics of your organization they also impact how you behave you know we know that you know managers behave differently in different organizations because of the culture of that organization so so on all these things they they the situation would impact how you perceive the time also morning midday afternoon so if we take a class in the morning fine if we take a class at 3 pm you know afternoon maybe not so fine so the timing is also important when you are hearing or listening to something or trying to you know maybe attend a class the the how much attention you pay in the class how much you understand in the class all that may also depend on the timing of the class right similarly the roles and relationships what role you are into what role i am into that also impacts how we perceive each other so all of these things are the characteristics of the situation which will impact how you perceive for example this lecture how you understand this lecture will would depend on all these things then the characteristics of the perceiver for example if you are listening to me you are the perceiver right now your needs and motives your self concept your personality your psychological state physiological state past experience all these things will impact how you understand what i'm saying so needs and motives if you have really come to attend the class you will try to pay attention if for example you have some urgent work to attend to and you have to suddenly go to the market or whatever then maybe you're not paying attention to me because you have something else you know in your mind so your need right now your motive right now will impact how much attention you will pay to what i'm saying then the self concept also if you think that probably you already know what i'm saying then you will probably not pay attention to whatever i have to say so your own understanding of yourself your own self concept your own self esteem your own idea yourself that also impacts how you understand others how you understand people and situations and events right so my own understanding of myself will impact how i look at others if i think that i know everything then maybe i will not have a very positive view about others so those things right then past experience or my personality personality is your trait your mental makeup your way of looking at things and i'll be discussing personality in the next topic it's a complete topic we will look at what personality is and how they are different and how they impact how we work and how we manage and so on so personality also impacts perception physiological state obviously if somebody is not feeling well has high fever or something that person will not be in a state to 
uh, you know sit and attend my class maybe that person would like to you know go and rest or something so physiological state is also important so as a perceiver your needs and motives and your physiological state all of these things they are important because they impact how much attention you would be paying to the stimuli and how much interest you will be taking in stimuli and you will like the stimuli or you will not like the stimuli and whatever meanings you will attach all that will depend on these things so basically uh, this is what the perception uh, model is this is what the perception process says in general this is what is happening to us all the time this is what is happening to us in our daily lives after this i'll come to what is perception for managers and how it is different uh, somebody wanted to ask something yes ma'am okay actually ma'am i wanted to ask that yes. uh, talk about the left and right brain hmm could you please elaborate it that uh, if someone has left brain more, more active than the right brain or someone has uh, more active the right brain than the left brain mm -hmm. and what how it how it would it impacts this is you, you could read more because this is part of neurosciences this is more part of uh, you know, uh, psych psychiatry and all those fields not really part of what we are discussing but uh, people have you know some people have right brain more active some people have left brain more active and that impacts uh, for example when i discuss this whether you're looking at the foreground or the background depends on what is more active so some people uh, would notice the foreground and some people would notice the background depending on which part of the brain is more active similarly the, the closure the missing information that i discussed again somebody may really fill in a lot of missing information somebody may not be able to do that depending on how your brain works so all of us have a different physiology you know uh, when i was discussing op model um, in the previous class uh, and i was discussing the individual variables group variables and organizational variables so within the individual variables i discussed about physical you know features and makeup and psychology and physiology what is that physiology is your you know physical features and aspects and that may also include the structure of your brain that may also include many of these things your physiology may be different from my physiology and because your structure of brain is different from mine we may uh, notice things differently we may understand things differently so that is why percep perception would differ but as i said this is part of all you know neurosciences and those kinds of fields and somebody who is interested may probably look more into that and understand how brains differ and how they function right so this is how brains uh, differ and because brains differ therefore our interpretation of reality also differs now uh, okay then uh, so this was about the the perception process uh, now uh, as i said our perceptions often differ they differ because of because of the characteristics of the stimuli or the situation or the perceiver apart from this our perception also differs because many a times our perception is distorted and it is distorted because there are a lot of biases prejudices shortcuts which are there in our perception and all these biases and shortcuts and prejudices they impact your perception process so what are these frequently used shortcuts in judging others or in judging anything else what are these shortcuts that we usually deploy which leads to you know some kind of distorted perception so what are those biases what are those uh, prejudices that may be there what are those shortcuts that are there which distort our perception so i'll be looking at these because they are important from the point of view of ob and they are important to understand why managers make wrong decisions why managers make wrong uh, judgments so they are important to understand that so these are certain you know uh, important um, concepts as far as these shortcuts are concerned there is this uh, halo effect and horn effect which impacts your uh, perception halo effect is forming an impression about a person or about anything usually a person on the basis of a single positive characteristic so based on one single positive trait i may start thinking that you know you are a very good person and so on based on one thing positive that i know about you so for example if an employee is proficient in one area of work 
I may start thinking that this person is very good and he is, you know, proficient in all the areas. This is called as a halo effect. You know, you start attributing everything positive with that person just because that person is good in one aspect. So we start thinking that this person is good in all, you know, different uh, aspects. So this is the halo effect. Similar to this is the horn effect, just the opposite, you know, of the halo effect. Uh, you look at one negative attribute of a person and you start thinking that everything is wrong with this person. So, for example, if an employee is not able to complete a project, his manager may start thinking that this employee is incompetent. Whereas this may not be so. Maybe that employee is not in incompetent. Maybe that employee has just not been able to complete the project because of some some other genuine reason. But that that you know, manager may start thinking that you know he's an in incompetent person. He has not been able to complete his target or whatever. So we start attaching negative attributes based on one negative experience. It's called as the horn effect, right? So halo effect and horn effect. These are two uh, biases that may often come in in our perception process. So because I like you on one aspect, I may start thinking you are very good. Or because because I dislike you on one aspect, I may start thinking you're not good. This is wrong. Because this means that we are judging a person based on one trait. And this judging a person based on just one trait is distortion of perception. But why it is important? Why it is important is because as managers, every day we make those uh, you know, mistakes. We, may, we make those uh, misjudgments. So these are problems that often are there in the uh, perception process. Then there, there are other effects, the spillover effect and the contrast effect, they also impact the perception process. So we have two classes after when the first class is going to be over, I'll take a break and then we'll come back for the second class. Uh, so please remind me, Zareen. Otherwise, I may continue for two periods straight. Spillover effect and contrast effect, right? Spillover is uh, something that spills over. A past experience may spill over in the present or in the future. So I can, I may sometimes evaluate you on the basis of my past experience with you. If in the past I've had some, you know, negative experience with you, I may start thinking you are a negative person or there is some problem with you. If uh, in the past I've had a positive experience with you, I may start thinking positively about you. So the impression that I form about you may also depend on your past uh, performance or, or your past you know, impression that was formed on me. So if an employee is seen quarreling with his colleagues on more than one count, he may be seen as an, uh, an offender, a, a habitual one. So basically, the past behavior has a bearing on the present or future behavior. So it has a spillover effect. Similarly, we have a contrast effect. Contrast effect is my judgment of you may often be impacted by others who are around you. You know, we say evaluation of a person's characteristics may be affected by comparison with other people who I may have recently encountered. So how I judge you may also depend on the others who are there with you. For example, in, a, in an interview, what happens in an interview? When you go and give an interview, uh, maybe let's say for a job, if you're giving an interview, how, how are you appraised? How, uh, how are you evaluated? Are you evaluated only on the basis of your performance? Did you get my question? Yes, ma'am. Uh, we are not just evaluated on our performance, but on yes. the basis of our companions as well. Yes, yes. So you are you are also evaluated on the basis of the others who are appearing for the interview. When you go for the interview, you are evaluated on the basis of the other persons who are there, and especially the persons who have just come before you or the person who may be coming just after you, you are evaluated immediately on the basis of that. So, okay, you are better than this. We start thinking you are good. Or maybe the earlier person who just came before you was better. So, we, we may start evaluating you on the basis of that. So, this is contrast effect. That is why, you know, there is the saying, it is said that a person's company is very important and we must have good friends because, you know, our uh, people, the judgment that people make about us is based on 
friends we have the company that we have that impacts the impression that people may form about us you know uh, mothers typically would say that you know those sai niya tumhara and things so what happens you know you are judged based on your friends the company the circle you are in so those are things which are important so often the interpretation that people may, may make about me may be impacted by who i am with my friends or you know the people i'm sitting with and so on there is a contrast of it people evaluate you based on the people who are around you so this is contrast effect so these are uh, you know these are things which are always um, there in perception then there is projection effect and stereotyping projection is attributing one's own characteristic to other people so we may start thinking uh, you know about others we may start thinking what we think about ourselves if a manager is ethical he would expect others to be ethical too if a manager is punctual he will expect others to be punctual too and so on so the understanding that we have about others would be impacted by our own characteristics so if i'm ethical i want everybody to be ethical if i'm punctual i would want everybody to be punctual for the meeting and so on so attributing one's own characteristic to other people we start interpreting people based on our characteristics so if i'm punctual and you are not then i start thinking that you are maybe you are not serious or uh, you know uh, you you are not reliable or whatever because of the fact that punctuality is important for me so projection effect i often start i may often start uh, attributing my own characteristics to other people and i may start interpreting other people based on my attributes so this is also projection uh, this is also a bias then stereotyping stereotyping is the most common bias it's the most common bias stereotypes you know what stereotypes are you know so for example we start attaching certain uh, attributes to people based on the group that they belong to so people of this group are like that people of this region are like this or you know uh, females are like that or males are like that or whatever you know so those kinds of stereotypes we may have women can't drive and so on so th- those mis judgments that we have you know stereotypes these stereotypes are there we may not uh, agree but we have these stereotypes and these stereotypes they impact how we uh, look at people how we interpret people so all our you know judgmental errors these are all biases these are all you know shortcomings which impact our perception uh so all these uh, so all these shortcomings all these uh, some people are very equally big some people are victims of these uh, biases some people may not be so for example some person may have a lot of stereotypes another person may not have that those many stereotypes so your perception would depend on what kind of stereotypes you have my perception would depend on what kind of stereotypes i have and how many stereotypes i have but the fact is the fact actually is that all of us have some of these biases we do have some stereotypes we do have some projection errors we do have halo and horn effects and all those things and that is why our perception about reality is never the same it is always different from the reality it is always in a way affected by many of these biases one more important thing uh, i would discuss uh, related to these biases and all these things is this you know attribution theory which is al- already which which is often discussed in perception there is this theory called as attribution theory the attribution theory says that we attribute certain causes to people's behavior for example if somebody is late for a meeting i may start attributing a cause okay this person is late for a meeting because he is careless when i do that i am attaching a person specific cause to his behavior an internal cause to his behavior on the other hand you may think that this person is late maybe he got late because there was a traffic jam and he got late in coming now you are attributing his coming late to an external factor an environment factor which is not in his control a traffic jam 
So maybe you think that this person was late because of this traffic jam. So you are attributing an external factor. Whereas I may think that no, he is careless, he is irresponsible, and that is why he's late. So I'm attributing an internal factor, a person specific factor. So in reality, what happens is that we attribute certain causes to people's behaviors. And these causes could be person specific or environment specific, internal or external. Now what happens is that, you know, when it comes to judging people, we are very clever. And what is this? There is this fundamental attribution error and self-serving bias, which comes in when we judge ourselves and then we judge others. So, for example, when we judge others, we always think that, you know, there is a, if a person, when we judge others, if a person is behaving negatively, we feel he is important. There is some problem with him. But if a person is behaving positively, we don't always feel like that. So we always attribute causes to others based on these aspects, you know, overestimate the influence of internal factors, especially when it comes to failures or negative behavior. So if, as I said, if a person is late, most of the time, people will think that he is actually careless and not, you know, uh, particular about sticking time and so on. So we attribute internal factors. But if I am late, I will always have a very valid and genuine reason for coming late. So when it comes to judging myself, I have a different, you know, parameter. When it comes to judging you, I will have a different parameter. And this happens. This happens with all of us and this happens with all managers. So we have a self-serving bias. When it, when it comes to me, I will have a self-serving bias. But when it comes to you, I will have a different way of looking at things. So self-serving bias is a tendency for individuals to attribute their own successes to internal factors while putting the blame for failures on external factors. So if I'm successful, that is because I'm good. But if I failed, it is because of somebody else. Some external factor is responsible. I am not responsible. So self-serving bias. I judge myself differently. And I judge you differently. And as I said, this happens with all of us. So which factor you are attributing to a person would depend on you know, internal, external. But that would be different. When we judge others, we attribute different factors. When we judge ourselves, we attribute different factors. So as we said, if somebody else is behaving negatively, we attribute an internal factor. But if something happens with me, if I fail in something, then I attribute an external factor. So self-serving bias. So basically, these are, you know, different kinds of biases that come in in our judgment of, you know, ourselves as well as in our judgment of others. And this is extremely, extremely pertinent and important for managers because every day managers are working with people. Most of the things that you are doing as a manager, you are working with people, you are communicating, you are teaming up, you are doing a project and how you judge others will depend on many of these biases, attribution, you know, errors and so on. So this is how our perception process gets affected. There are three ways to understand causes, you know, what I discussed just now in the previous slide, how you attribute. There are three things to understand causes, distinctiveness, consensus, consistency. In order to minimize this attribution error, look at these three things. You cannot, you can never completely do away with all biases because we are human beings. We have limited you know, capacity in terms of thinking and analyzing. We are not perfect. So there will always be some problems. We cannot eliminate these problems completely, but we can minimize. So as far as this attribution errors are concerned, as a manager, try to minimize these attribution errors. Now, what can you do to minimize these attribution errors? Look for three things. The first thing is distinctiveness. When you judge somebody, first look for distinctiveness. Distinctiveness means, is he behaving differently in different situations? Okay, look at that first. Let me give you an example. Like the, the, original the for example that I just gave you uh, some time back that maybe you're a manager you call a meeting and one employee comes late now don't start judging that person that he's late so he's irresponsible and attributing internal causes and all that look at his distinctiveness distinctiveness means is he behaving differently in different situations maybe right now he's late but maybe in other things he's good 
he does his work on time he completes his target on time he is competent he is very good with his colleagues and you know team members so maybe on other things he is good so maybe if he came late today he can be condoned for that he can be pardoned for that maybe it was some external factor because of which he got late so you before you know jumping to a conclusion you must always try to analyze a person based on his other behaviors also and not just based on one event not just based on one episode look at his other you know episodes and other behaviors and other situations also and then interpret so distinctive similarly consensus is everybody behaving like that if everybody is behaving like that it means there is some problem somewhere else you know maybe there is an external factor you need to to see that so for example you know if everybody is coming late for the class then maybe there is some some reason you know maybe you you had another class and the teacher left you late and that is why maybe you joined this late uh, this class late so if everybody is behaving in the same manner there could be an external factor now that does not mean that you start coming late for the class and we'll pardon you no so anyway so consensus means that you look at that person's behavior in relation to how others are behaving if everyone is late maybe there could be some reason but if only this person is late then maybe you think that okay he he could be careless or whatever so look at consensus also look at what others are doing if everyone is dissatisfied in that team if everyone is missing targets in that team there is a problem why is everyone missing targets why is everyone dissatisfied why is everyone fighting in that team so there is some problem somewhere we need to address that right so look at consensus and then consistency consistency means over time behavior over time is he always late in meetings is he always negligent is he always missing his targets so there is consistency in his behavior it means every time he is doing something negative if every time he is doing something negative it's an internal factor he is the problem person but if on other times other occasions his behavior is okay and it's, it's only once in a while then then maybe we can think that it's an external factor so consistency you know repeating the same mistake again and again it means there is a problem in that person because he is repeating the same mistake again and again so we look at distinctiveness we look at consensus of behavior we look at consistency of behavior and then we try to make judgment so as a as a manager you must never jump to conclusion you must always before making a judgment about people and about situations you must always look at these three things distinctiveness consistency and consensus and then after thinking coolly then only you must arrive at any kind of judgment so that is what perception is and that is how uh, you know often our perception may get distorted and we need to think about all these things should we take a break before i come to this this is the last part now perception and okay perception and managerial effectiveness how perception impacts managerial effectiveness and uh, how it impacts everyday management and what managers need to do in order to you know uh, improve their perception and the problems that come with perception uh so I, if you want i can take a break for 10 minutes and then we can come back what do we do zarin then as you like so like 12:55 no, okay. we can take a break Tea. yeah uh, one one thing is i can continue and leave you early that is also an option because i will not continue till 2 then i will leave you at 1:30 maybe yes yes vakas then you will continue Ah, okay. So if I continue, I'll leave you early. That is the advantage. Okay, we we save time that way, and the flow also doesn't get disturbed. All right. So the link between perception and uh, managerial effectiveness. Now, so I've discussed the perception model. I've discussed how perception takes place. I've discussed uh, the biases which are there. Now, actually, coming to you know, the link between perception and managerial effectiveness. Okay. Uh, how perception although i am already discussing that in the previous slides i have discussed so how perception impacts the the everyday management activities okay uh, all right so as i said in the beginning everything that you do as a manager everything that you do as a manager it's all your perception okay and there are effective managers there are not so effective managers because their perceptions are different so based on 
your perception you may either become an effective manager or you may become an ineffective manager okay uh, so <clears throat> there are problems that we encounter on a daily basis as managers and <clears throat> we make decisions regarding those problems and the decisions that we make regarding those problems those decisions they uh, basically uh, are made uh, based on our perception of uh, the the situation or the problem okay so so how you look at the problem will affect what decision you make about that problem and because as we we have just now seen but because perceptions differ that is why your assessment of a problem may also uh, differ and that is why your decision may differ so all managers don't think the same all managers don't uh, decide in the same manner they have different perceptions and that is why the decisions that they actually make would depend on these different perceptions now just some examples of how everyday managerial activity is affected by perception now, as we said everything that you do everything is impacted by perception but these are just uh, some examples of some of those things which are you know greatly impacted by perception selection decisions for example uh, i just now discussed about interview when you take interview you know how you look at the candidates how you analyze the candidates that may depend on the contrast effect and all those things so selection decisions are primarily perception oriented decisions when you take interviews and you are selecting a candidate how you select all that is based on the perception of the interviewers and uh, you know their biases or their stereotypes or their shortcuts may impact who they select and who they reject and you know that is why we have this type 1 and type 2 error you must have probably read about these errors in research methodology in these areas type 1 and type 2 error if you have too many perception biases then as an interviewer if you are taking interviews if you have too many biases you will be you know making errors which are called as these type 1 and type 2 errors any idea what these are type 1 type 2 errors uh we call them as uh, select errors and reject errors select error is selecting the wrong person and reject error is rejecting the right person when interviewers are biased when they have stereotypes when they jump to conclusions then they often select the wrong people and they reject the right people and this is a problem it, it happens in even the best of organizations when they are selecting people the interviewers are not even trained enough to to actually evaluate the candidates in the right perspective you know we have i have done a lot of research in this area and have written research papers also and we have on the basis of the literature that we have evaluated and um, case studies which are there we have seen that even the best organizations they make these mistakes during interview they because the interviewers are often people who have not been given adequate training in how to evaluate the the candidates what parameters to think of when to evaluate the candidates and every interviewer has a different perspective so an hr person is sitting that person has a different perspective a marketing person may be sitting in the interview he will have a different orientation or somebody else is sitting he may have a different orientation so all of them have different fields different uh, you know backgrounds different uh, departments to which they belong to and so their approach is also different and because their approach is different they make different decisions in interviews and that is why often interviews are extremely faulty and people often make this mistake of selecting the wrong people and rejecting the right people and so on it's not just interview when you extend this on a daily basis managers have to make a lot of selection decisions for example which person to keep in this team which person to keep in the other team so they select people and again because they have biases and they have stereotypes they select the wrong people to wrong teams you know they, they are not able to evaluate the the employees competencies or their areas or their strengths or weaknesses and which person will fit better in this team and which person will fit better in the other team they are not able to evaluate that and because of that often these selections are wrong so managers make on a daily basis a lot of selection related decisions you know they have to select things they have to select people for assignments for different activities 
and because their their you know perceptions may be biased so that is why they often select wrong people type 1 and type 2 error so selection decisions and errors in selection decisions is one area which is greatly impacted by biases in perception then the second uh, uh, area of importance and the second you know management aspect which is importance is important is performance expectations it is said that people perform based on the expectations that managers have about them leaders expectations about employees capabilities gets reflected in their performance do you agree with this our performance at the workplace often depends on how the leader is motivating us and what expectations the leader has from us so often the leader's expectations about our capabilities that impacts how we behave and how we perform you know it happens you know even in our daily lives it's often said you know in the family for example you have a child so it is said that you know you keep encouraging that child you keep uh, giving positive you know ideas to the child positive encouragement to the child and because the child feels uh, encouraged the child will perform better the same thing happens at work places also if a leader is constantly encouraging if a leader is constantly having positive expectations then employees also feel good about themselves and they try to do better and they perform better but if the leader has negative perceptions and negative expectations and is always discouraging and so on often employees they get disgruntled and they don't want to you know put in effort they don't want to work hard and their performance dips down so how people perform at the workplace depends on a lot of things but it depends primarily on the leader and how that leader is you know passing on his positive opinions and expectations about uh, his people so the pygmalion effect are you aware of what this pygmalion effect is have you ever read about this pygmalion in management no ma'am have you heard of this pygmalion is a book also have you ever heard there's a novel on this that sir yes ma'am joy hmm? abu sir sobia ma'am it's written it is a novel by whom it's a general gk question i'm asking you nothing related to obi sakhib wake up ma'am george bernard shaw ha ah, george bernard shaw have you read this novel what do you know about this novel pygmalion what is this that is that, that from from there only we have borrowed this ma'am the syllabus of my elder brother okay pygmalion it that is basically name. pygmalion was a you know it's it's a greek it's a concept which has been borrowed from a greek mythology also uh, the pygmalion effect you know there was a sculptor who actually made a very beautiful sculpture of a female and it's a mythological tale he made a very beautiful sculpture of a female and then the because the sculpture was so beautiful so the sculptor he uh, kind of fell in love with with his own sculpture and uh, he fell so much in love with the sculpture that after some time he started the the sculpture actually came to life so it was not the sculpture coming to life it was this sculptor's imagination that this beautiful girl has come to life and so on so basically this is the pygmalion effect this is the analogy that we draw in management but because you know that person was so much in love with his work he could feel that the work was coming alive so that is the idea that when you respect your employees when you have positive expectations about your employees employees will come to life they will try to keep up your expectations and the same idea has been used in george bernard shaw's book also pygmalion is the name of the book in that there is a little girl who's there was a flower girl she delivers flowers to people's houses and she feels that my job is not good it's a she doesn't feel very good about her job she feels i'm just a flower girl selling flowers i want to do something bigger in life and she felt that people are not respecting her job but one day you know there was a a professor who comes to take flowers and he treats the girl with a lot of respect and he encourages the girl and then that little girl feels that you know even i can be respected because she belong to a humbler background so she felt that you know somebody is respecting me i can also i am also a person who can be respected and then she starts thinking you know a little highly about herself uh you know confidence is boosted and then she starts learning 
under the professor's guidance and so on and that is how she becomes a, a you know a, a, when she grows up she becomes a, an able woman and so on so pigmalion effect is that idea you know when you treat people with respect when you have positive expectations from them and you pass on that expectation people also feel that they have to perform so that is what performance expectations are your people's performances as a manager your people's performances will depend on how you perceive your people then the, a lot of other things group dynamics how groups work if you have stereotypes about people if you profile people based on gender or based on anything else that starts affecting the group dynamics and that starts uh, affecting group work again your unit 4 is completely dedicated to group dynamics uh, so we will take that up later so how groups work how effective they are how motivated they are uh, and how they think all that depends on the perception that group members have about each other and the perception that group leader has about group members and so on. then performance appraisal every day companies are appraising people's performances they are giving rewards and salaries based on performance now in it is said that even this issue is a problematic issue in lot of companies we appraise performance but there are subjective biases there are judgmental errors there is problem in the performance appraisal process there is problem in the the method that is used for appraisal in the parameter which is used for appraisal there are too many judgments too many biases i like you so i give you good score if i don't like you i'll give you bad score and all those things they happen everywhere so performance appraisal and rewards they also get impacted by people's perception about managers perception so all these things they get affected then employee behavior what i discussed just now the pigmalion effect how much effort you will put will depend on your perception of things if you think the company you know will reward you you will put in more effort if you think that despite so much effort the company is not rewarding you you will not put in that effort so how much effort you put in how you behave how you perform will depend on how you look at things around you how you perceive your manager and other things and then you accordingly behave so all these things are part of your perception my perception and in general perceptions at the workplace then information overload it's a serious problem now in a lot of companies you know information overload people are victims of information overload what is this information overload we are having access to internet we are having access to information and that big data and huge data and whatever data what is all this basically there is too much of information employees have too much of information and when there is so much of information you have to grapple with all this information overload and when there is so much of information that some some sometimes it starts impacting you negatively it starts overloading you overburdening you you know it it, it burdens your sensory uh, organs and you start having sensory processing disorder too much of work too much of information too much of paperwork all these things so your information channels they start getting distorted so information overload you know these the this is also an important work stress and that impacts people's performance there is this miller's law which is often uh, you know cited to explain this information overload miller said that for employees there is a magical number you know which based on research they said there is this magical number of 7 plus minus 2 so at one point of time a person can process 5 to 7 bit pay types of information not more than that if you give them so many assignments at the same time too many assignments at the same time too much of work at the same time too much of information to process at the same time too many mails and too many uh, things to look, look at then maybe the the employees will not be able to handle all of that and they will in a way succumb to all that pressure they they will be negatively impacted by all this overload of information because our brains cannot process so much of information at the same time you know our our perception is limited so the perceptual capacity is limited so information overload happens and when it happens employees are stressed out and when they are stressed out that starts uh, you know uh, affecting them negatively so anyway these are all part of everyday perception problems that organizations uh, experience now okay so let me discuss this um, uh, jo harry window which is a concept which is given by two people jo luft and harry who say that you know this concept may be applied by anyone in their personal lives to improve their perception they talk about this honing of perception skills you know there are these uh, four concepts which have been discussed in this model uh, there are they say four sides of you four dimensions of you four aspects of you there are these four dimensions based on what others know about you what others don't know about you 
than what you know about yourself and what you don't know about yourself. Based on these four aspects, there are four types of you know personalities within yourself or four sides of you, four dimensions of you. Now, I don't know, others don't know. There are certain aspects of your personality which you are not aware about and others are also not aware about. This is called as the dark or the undisclosed self. Maybe you have some strength, but you don't know you have those strengths. Maybe you have some weaknesses, but you don't know. And others also don't know. So it's a dark, undisclosed self. You know, we are very complex human beings. We don't know everything about ourselves. We don't know everything about others. So there are always certain dark, you know, hidden facts about us, which we may discover later on, or we may not. So there's always this undisclosed self. Then we have, I know, but others don't know. There is certain thing, certain things about me that I may know. That is my private self. Some, some information about me, some strength, some weakness, something about me that I know, but others don't know. So it's a private self. It's a it's private part of my personality, hidden self. Then there are certain parts of my personality which come under I don't know and uh, others know. It's called as the blind self. Maybe there are certain strengths which I'm not aware about, but others know about it. Maybe there are certain weaknesses that I'm not aware about, but others know about my weakness. And this happens, especially with weaknesses. There are a lot of people who may know my weaknesses, but I may not know because I don't think I have any weaknesses. So this kind of perception happens, you know, this kind of perceptual errors happen. We don't uh, often realize our weaknesses. We don't often realize our shortcomings or drawbacks, but others may realize. So others may know, I don't know, it's a blind self. And then there is this public area, the pub public part of your personality. You also know, others also know. So for example, this is your name, you're studying in MBA, in this university, you belong to this place, you're this kind of a person. So maybe certain things which are facts, which everybody knows. So public area is this I know, others know area. Now what is, very quickly, because I want to wind up now, what is the relevance of all these four sides of the personality and why I'm discussing it as part of uh, perception? The relevance is that you have to know that there are these four sides, first of all. And each part of this, you know, your personality could be a strength, it could be a weakness. So you have to understand what it is. And you have to capitalize on the positive or the strength part. And you have to sort of, you know, reduce the negative or the weaknesses part. So you have to understand these four parts of your personality. For example, uh, the public self. Okay, public self is the the part of your personality which everyone knows about. Is it a strength or is it a weakness? What is it? Nafis Hussain? Uh, okay. Weakness, ma'am. Weakness. Your public uh, aspect of your personality, is it a weakness? Is it good, bad, what? What is it? For me, uh, I should also know what others know about me. You should know what others know about you, but but uh, is it okay to have a public area? Yes. Yes, of course, because all of us have a public area. I mean, everybody would know that I'm teacher teaching in this department and so on. And this is part of my public personality, you know, things, facts, which people would know naturally because we live in a society, we exist in a in an environment. So many things about our personality is known to others. But how big should be a public area? Can somebody answer that? Should your public area be too big or too small? How big should it be? Can it become a weakness? Quickly answer that. Yeah, it should be limited to a certain it extent. Be, it should be limited. Okay. You know, it is said. Yes, uh, no. yes ma'am. Um, it can affect uh, like... Uh, if people know too much about yourself, they can uh, plan according to your uh, uh, thinking and yes, uh, what... Uh, right, right. So it is said that, you know, you have to be very careful about your public area. How much information you actually want people to know. There are certain things which are natural, which people would know. But if people know too many things about you, maybe not very good for you. So you have to limit that. You know, for example, nowadays, especially in the age of social media and all those things, people know a lot about us. You know, they because we post things on Facebook and so many other media and so many other channel, people know a lot of things about us. 
and when people get to know a lot of things about us the problem is that sometimes they may also get to know our weaknesses so you know you have to manage your public area you cannot let people have access to everything all your information you have to be very you know able and uh, you know smart in terms of managing your public area how much information i want people to know about me i have to manage that nobody else should be uh, managing my information i should manage it especially when it comes to social media and things like that how important is social media uh, uh, to to understand your personality is it important is your is your facebook profile important to understand your personality no ma'am no ma'am arham yes ma'am is, is your facebook profile yes, important to understand your personality no ma'am not really it's not okay karishka no. Ma'am, it is important if someone is active on Facebook, then how? Ma'am, because uh, how is it important? What, what we like and what we don't like have to people understand about our personalities and what we post. Okay, um, you are all MBA students, right? Maybe tomorrow you will be applying for jobs. When you apply for jobs, is your Facebook profile important for companies? No, ma'am. No. Yes, ma'am. LinkedIn is, but I don't think Facebook. Sorry, ma'am. Some some companies HR follow the Facebook profile of their employees to show what kind of content they are posting okay. on social media. Okay, that is for employees. Let's say you are apply applying for a job. You are not an employee. Is your Facebook profile important to the company? Somebody said LinkedIn. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so LinkedIn is more of a professional, uh, you know, networking site. It gives you a professional background, skills, and all those things. So it is important. But what about Facebook? Is it important? Is it important? Yes, ma'am. It is important. How is it important for the company? What you're sharing with your friends? What which picture you are posting? Where you traveled? Is that all that important for the company for which you have applied? Amazia. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, it helps in knowing the personality of a person, like the values, beliefs. Okay. Oh, all right. Let me tell you. Try to read on this. Maybe I'll share something. Ma'am, may I add a point? I uh, I'll take your point. Companies later on. Companies today. Let me, you know, tell you that companies today are actively, actively looking at your social media profile before they hire you. Not just employees. prospective employees when you apply for a job most companies today have very comprehensive social media analytics uh, software that they deploy to filter out information about their prospective candidates and they try to see what are you posting on facebook for example what are your likes and dislikes because and this your postings and your likes and dislikes they are interpreted by psychologists especially in good companies to understand what kind of person you are your personality and then based on that they interpret whether you would be suitable for their company or not so it's a conscious strategy by companies to today read into people's social media profiles to understand their personalities and then use that as a basis for selection and so on not just employees even you as mba students as prospective students otherwise also most of the time companies are doing lot of social media research trying to find out what university students are discussing what perceptions they have about us as a company because students they discuss about companies also they discuss about jobs also they discuss, discuss about so many things so companies are trying to filter out all those information to understand how are youngsters looking at us how do youngsters evaluate us what are they discussing what do students of this you know college wise university wise they they try to understand if i am going for a campus placement i look at the profile of the students of that particular camp campus to understand what are they discussing what type of personality they have what culture they have in the campus what kind of learning they have been given and so on so it's a conscious strategy so so basically public area is the area which is available to for everybody to see and and actually it is important uh, from the point of view of uh, you know organizations because it is being actually looked at so you have to be very careful about your public area i'll come to you adnan later let me first take up the other ones blind self how important is that quickly let me uh, wind up this uh, quickly uh, blind spot is your i don't know others know is that good ma'am it's not good we should it's know not ma'am no it's not good often it's not good because there are certain things that about you which you don't know but others know 
you know, maybe th these are certain weaknesses maybe these are certain shortcomings maybe these are certain drawbacks in your personality which others know but you have never tried to think about that and when others know your weaknesses they can always manipulate you they can always take advantage so it's not good to have a blind self so what should you do then you should try to introspect you should try to analyze your own personality and we all should do it as individuals as students as teachers as employees whatever we should always try to analyze our own personalities look at criticism if somebody is criticizing you it's okay let them criticize but you go back and introspect why did this person criticize me is it really so do i really get angry very fast do i really uh, use wrong words whatever so blind self is not good others can take advantage of your blind self so try to look into yourself try to uncover your own blind self for your own advantage then uh, private self i know others don't know is it okay arham is it okay to have a private self yes ma'am no. yes ma'am it is it it, it is it, actually you should have a big private self private self is your strength whether it is your weaknesses strengths abilities capabilities whatever information about you you must have a very big private self it's it's good actually you know things about yourself you know your strengths you know your weaknesses you know things about you and maybe others don't know those things it's okay so private self is your very good you know big big strength and uh, you know you need to know yourself more and more and maybe decide how much others should know about you and then the dark and disclosed self is obviously that part of your personality which you have not discovered others have also not discovered but it's okay to keep discovering yourself it's always advisable to keep discovering yourself look at yourself look at your failures uh, look at your successes look at your mistakes why did i fail here why did i say this why did this person feel bad about what i said why did he criticize me we must keep analyzing all these things and when you keep analyzing these things we try to take some corrective action and this is not just for managers this is for all of us as individuals we must always try to improve every day learn more about yourself improve yourself make yourself a better person I mean, we should be better as individuals you know you, you you must try to be a better son or a better daughter or a better uh, whatever colleague or a friend or, or student so you must try to keep you know understanding yourself more and more so the more you understand yourself the better you will understand situations that is the whole point of explaining this model to you when we understand ourselves better in the right perspective we understand others also better we understand other things also better and that improves us you know our our overall performance that improves us as a manager that uh, improves us as individuals so this is about honing perceptual uh, skills uh, i will not discuss this slide just have a look some key pointers of how managers can hone their hone their perceptual uh, skills so empathize with people try to understand listen to them empathize have positive attitudes avoid perception biases and shortcuts that i just discussed about have a broader picture always have a broad picture don't have a narrow perspective don't be like the six blind men in the you know who perceive the elephant from just one perspective have a broader picture before making a judgment try to have as much information as possible and then make judgments about people or about anything so look at things in a broader perspective objectively not subjectively communicate talk to people get feedback understand what they think about you and then analyze that and try to improve avoid attributions generalizations jumping to conclusions uh, stereotypes avoid that they never help we must avoid them we cannot as we said we cannot be perfect we cannot uh, do away with all biases but try to limit try to minimize try to avoid those biases be conscious of selective perception selective perception means based on partial information you start jumping to conclusions you start making interpretations don't do that make your thorough do your thorough homework especially as managers before you are taking a decision before you are analyzing a person before you are punishing an employee try to go deeper into the problem understand the problem and then you try to make a judgment and then take action get right information because information is important and develop the knack of reading non verbal cues your employees will not tell you everything your employees may not say everything out of fear or or apprehension or whatever 
but try to read silence try to read the unsaid try to read the non verbal cues in the environment something which is not being said has to be heard that is important so the non verbal cues are also important so for managers it's not just what people are saying which is important it's also what people are not saying that is also important so go deeper into things and try to analyze the unsaid the unspoken because that also is part of the organization there's this interesting book it's a very old book but if you you know can get it's a small book maybe if you can get hold of it what they don't teach you at harvard business school it was a best seller at one point of time this is what the book talks about it says no business school harvard business school is for number 1 it says no business school can teach you all this you have to learn yourself how to improve yourself how to improve your perceptual skills how to become better as a manager and no business school can teach you that you have to develop that knack you have to develop that skill so this is how uh, perception is actually important for managers we have discussed the process we have discussed the limitations the problems uh, which are there and we have discussed what are the things that we can do to hone our perceptual skills i think i'll stop with that in the next class i'll maybe take up one or two issues and then move to the next topic somebody wanted to ask something ma'am adnan i guess uh, adnan are you here not here All right, maybe in the next class you can take it up. And none is not here. What? Anybody else? You want to ask something or point out something? I'm. I'm like yes. wondering that yeah. so a person could manipulate uh, his uh, social media uh, profile as well. Hmm. Sorry. So, not. Actually, ma'am, uh, a person could manipulate his um, social media profile as well. Mm-hmm. That was, I think, it. And you said that a employer uh, go through the profile of a person, mm. but the person could also manipulate it just by posting uh, uh, any relevant photos or anything yeah, those related. Happen. Those things happen, you know. We all know they happen. But uh, see, now we are living in an age where you can't avoid social media. We are part of social media. All of us are there. All of us are there on LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever WhatsApp. So we are part of that social media. Uh, we are public our information is public but everything is about us is when i say everything i mean a lot of things about us is known this is something which is given you cannot be you know existing in a in a vacuum in a cocoon you are part of the world you are part of the, all this social media and facebook and all of these things so it's okay it's fine i mean if i'm posting something if i'm putting up so long as i know i'm not posting anything offensive so long as i'm careful about my privacy settings so long as i know who are, who my friends are who are who are the people who are watching me uh, maybe uh, what i'm sharing with people what i'm writing on my facebook or what i'm the comments that i'm putting up so long as you are little careful about that it's okay it's fine if somebody is looking at your social media profile let them it's fine but you as far as social media is concerned it's always advisable it's always good to be a little careful who you are befriending who you have in your circle what are they putting up what comments you are putting what are you liking and what are you whatever you know um, uh, sharing you should be careful there is no harm in being careful with that but it's fine we are all part of social media sometimes all these things happen i am not very good at you know all these things but i think youngsters they know better you would know what kind of you know privacy settings and all those things you can do to make your social media profile safe the safer the better but yes things are happening lot of things are happening there are certain things which we can't control it's fine but try to be careful that is what the idea is ma'am so, uh, yeah arham do you think facebook is uh, professionally reliable oh facebook uh, is not actually a professional website it's just a uh, networking site it's just for social networking it's called as a social networking site and uh, as somebody said linkedin and those uh, uh, networking sites are more for prof- for professional networking but what happens youngsters are very active on facebook typically youngsters are very active on facebook and companies are doing it so you you cannot avoid the reality they are doing it they are actually deploying a lot of social media analytics tools to understand youngsters their personalities and what they are posting and so on and so forth because your posts tell you uh, you know they tell about your personality 
they tell what kind of person you are what your likes and preferences and opinions are about things and those things are important for organizations because they want to know your personality because now there is this new field which has come in which is called as psychometric testing psychometric testing is at the time of selection interview they are using a lot of psychological tools putting in a lot of psychological tools questions also have been designed in such a manner that they are not only trying to understand your skills they are trying to understand your personality your psychological makeup and looking at your social media profile is a good way to understand your personality and it is happening operates companies are doing it so i'll share some very interesting article on that uh, in your group read that article so it's okay it's fine yes, I, mean, i mean all of us have social media profiles it's okay to have one it's okay to post it's okay to share with friends there's no problem in that so long as you are careful not to post anything which is offensive that is any way all of us should do not just for jobs and but otherwise also every day we should be careful with what we are sharing on social media isn't it ha uh, yes ma'am can we have the slide of today's lecture i'll give you i'll give you the notes don't worry thank you ma'am actually ma'am my question is yeah um, yes ma'am uh, what should we do if anybody uh, anybody personally or in a professional field criticizes us every time we don't always have a positive attitude regarding that so okay. what okay now see uh, bito this is very interesting because there are other issues that are coming up later how to handle these kinds of situations when i say that you should introspect that's a general way of looking at things you know if somebody is criticizing let us introspect let us uh, try to improve ourselves and so on but there are various kinds of strategies later on where that we'll be discussing about all of these things you know because you have asked this question so there is a strategy a self management strategy which is called as avoidance what is this avoidance strategy sometimes you know it is good to avoid things to avoid certain situations to avoid certain people to avoid things which are happening sometimes it is okay to have an avoidance strategy also so not every time i'm going to introspect and not every time i'm going to think about what you have said and so on sometimes we ignore sometimes we avoid that is also a good strategy for self management and that is a strategy that managers are also adopt you know managers they sometimes listen to people if there is a problem and they try to address the problem but not every day a manager will address the problems sometimes managers avoid certain problems and is it okay to avoid problems no ma'am no ma'am okay okay now generally it's not okay to avoid problems because they will you know keep on sometimes they may keep on becoming bigger and bigger and so on so it's not okay generally but as i said sometimes for specific things for certain things if the situation is like that it is sometimes actually okay to avoid a problem and this is also something which happens in reality often there is a problem which is happening somewhere in the organization and managers feel that it's just a temporary problem maybe it has just happened and it is not going to take place you know smart managers know the nature of problems also so they avoid and avoidance at certain times is a good strategy when you avoid a certain person when you ignore a certain thing that situation takes care of itself the person knows you are avoiding and that person will take care of the, the the problem so problems they get amended by themselves you cannot pay attention to everything you cannot you know uh, try to manage everything you cannot address everything so that is why in certain situations we avoid people we avoid problems we avoid situations and many a times you will see that the situation has addressed itself but you have to know which situation to avoid and which not to avoid so as i said you know this is a specific topic that we discuss you know zareen ma'am probably may discuss or i may discuss later on when we talk about conflicts at the workplace so how to handle conflicts there are various kinds of strategies of avoiding or you know looking at conflicts or or managing conflicts so not all conflicts have to be managed some conflicts may be avoided and the conflict resolves by itself so we would have discussed that in the third or fourth unit but because liba you have asked that question so i'm already discussing it that some conflicts some problems can be handled not all problems can be handled some problems sometimes can just be avoided and you will notice that they have sorted out 
by themselves this happens everyday life also this happens okay i must stop now so i i don't know if i answered that question like but but uh, i think we must stop for today and, excuse uh, me ma'am ma i have a question bilal okay quick one yes ma'am as you mentioned that uh, a person need to be to listen to what is unsaid okay so how do we need to develop those kind of skills um, now that is very different they can't teach you at the harvard business school also you have to learn that this is what i was just now pointing out you know uh, reading people uh, reading situations reading events listening to the unsaid this is something that you can't teach in a b school and this is something that you can't learn in a class this is something that comes gradually you have to be conscious of yourself you have to be conscious of the surroundings you have to be conscious of the people communicate listen to people think deeply introspect get feedback analyze the feedback that you get look at criticism do all these things that i have just now listed here and many more things these are just you know for example do all these things and then gradually you develop yourself as a manager you don't be become effective from day one managers become effective gradually through experience through learning through mistakes and the learning that we have from mistakes through all these things through talking to people listening to people empathizing with people observing people having a positive outlook everything all these things help you become uh, you know better in your perception okay chalo so let us wind up for today enough and uh, in the next class we may continue with this and then some other issues all right